Welcome to Political Brew for this Sunday morning. I'm Don Kerrigan sitting in for Pat Callahan, who's uh, still getting through the last of the turkey, joined by no turkeys, <laughs> Phil Harriman and John Richardson. Thank you guys for being here. Um, politics doesn't stop for Thanksgiving or anything else. Uh, this past week, some what we assume is good budget news for the state of Maine, a preliminary revenue forecast showing that the current budget should have a roughly $74 million surplus when it's all over. Uh, a surprise at all, Phil? You're the money man. No, I, I don't think it's a, a surprise, but I think we've got to put this into context, Don. $74 million, $78 million, whatever it ends up being, is really literally pennies on the dollar of the overall state budget. This isn't a windfall uh, for the government, but it does show that the economy is strong enough that we can stay on the budget projections, which, remember, the budget went up $800 million mm -hmm. over the last one. Yeah. John. I think it shows a very strong economy, and I think that's great news for Mainers. I also think it shows a certain amount of fiscal constraint, meaning that they knew that there would be a surplus. They didn't know how much, but they knew that there was one budgeted, and this is good news. I think the next session we'll find that uh, you'll see a lot of fiscal restraint as this budget surplus grows even larger. Well, so the ne new se next session that starts in about a month from now, just over a month from now, there's going to be lots and lots of hands reaching out to get some of that extra money to, for, to fund new programs or expand existing ones. We haven't heard yet if the governor is going to propose new spending, but we've certainly heard from at least one of her departments, DHHS, that they want more money for more, for more staff. Uh, is this going to become defi the defining issue of the session, John? Well, I, in the years that I spent in the legislature, every department wanted more money. Uh, every department said, here are the programs, here's what I can do with new money. If you want to give me new money, I'll expand the programs and I'll have this result. I don't think there's anything wrong with DHS saying this is what we could do if we get more money. But I think that Governor Mills will most think likely, she'll be tight -fisted? I think most likely she'll be very tight fisted. She's already said there'll be no tax increases. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a result of that, I think she's laying down her marker by saying we're going to show some fiscal restraint. Uh, between now and the next election. Phil, because obviously that was a big criticism of Republicans, even though most of them voted for this budget. <laughs> right. they, they, they were saying, oh, it spends way too much. <laughs> well, I, I don't normally say this about my esteemed colleague, but John, I, I think you are dreaming if you think that the legislature isn't going to put pressure on the governor to spend money. Because remember, they came into office, they swept the state house by storm, they took House, Senate, governor's office, big agenda, big needs to make up for the LePage perceived weaknesses in spending. They're going to come after this legislative session saying that the budget is doing better than expected. They held over bills, hundreds of bills that had money attached to them. I think this is going to be very difficult for the Dem Democrats. Well, I think everyone's going into an election year, and I think that's going to temper uh, their uh, thirst, if you will, for any kind of spending. Everyone knows they're going to seek a re-election or election uh, within uh, months of uh, the end of that session. That's why I'm saying, I think along with the chief executive saying, no, we're not going to be making spending uh, decisions, we've got to put money in the bank. And along with that and people facing elections, I think that's going to be the big, big issue. Hmm. Uh, speaking of Governor Mills, she uh, signed an executive order earlier this week, uh, last week, so saying uh, basically telling state government needs to show more great leadership when it comes to energy and the environment and climate change. Uh, more energy efficiency, more use of alternative fuels, alternative vehicles, a whole lot of uh, items related to that. Uh, Phil. Uh, a good move? Will that be at all controversial within the Republican ranks? No, I don't think so. You know, I think you can go all the way back to Governor McKernan and Governor King and Baldacci and so forth, all the way to Governor Mills. They have all been trying to find ways to be more friendly to our environment. It reduced costs. You can think of LED lighting and what that's done, and I could go on. I think it's easy for the governor to sign an executive office uh, order. You don't have to get an act of a legislature to do it. It basically says, I'm the governor, and I'm telling and everybody within the sound of my voice and <laughs> can read this proclamation, this is what we're going to do. The proof is in the results. And I compliment her for focusing on this, but executive orders and blue ribbon commissions are one thing. The tangible results that actually changes the weather is something else. Mm. John. I do. I mean, I think you're to some extent right, uh, Phil. I think that uh, her decision to make this executive order a reality is going to give and unleash some people's uh, imagination. 
and their energy towards looking for the kind of energy savings that uh, she is calling for. So I think it's a great move on her part that she were to uh, make this uh, call, if you will, to arms around uh, energy efficiency and different types of energy that uh, we might be looking at in the future. I think it's great she put solar on the Blaine house, right? She's gonna look to do things like that all around the state and I think it's great news. All right, thank you both very much. A lot more to talk about. We'll be back in a little while with more Political Proof.